Hello everybody and welcome to Green Star Trading with me Tom. All views, opinions and ideas expressed in this video are my own and do not constitute financial or trading advice in any way. It's just gone quarter past 5pm on Friday the 5th of March 2021 and we're going to spend the next few minutes looking at Bitcoin. Now I know I've been looking at Bitcoin quite a lot over the last few weeks but we are still in this broader crypto market correction at the moment and uh, trying to make sense of where we are in time and space has been a little tricky. Um, I've updated the count in terms of the corrective action since the high and I think I'm more positive in it now as the price data has had a chance to reveal itself and uh, have a more conf greater confidence in the count as it is. But that's for our Elliott Wave count later when we come to that. I'm essentially going to present two simple ideas to you and tell you which one I favour but both could be valid. Right then, before we do that though we're going to do as we always do on this channel, we're going to do our basic technical analysis first and our Elliott Wave analysis second. So first thing we're going to do, if you're new to the channel, is give you a quick rundown of the chart. We have our Elliott Wave on the chart which is all the numbers and all the letters. We are currently in logarithmic scale rather than arithmetic scale and we are on the daily time frame. We're just going to come out to the weekly time frame and auto the chart. Let's bring ourselves in a little closer. Right, there we go. Right, let's clear that count and let's run you through the rest of the chart. We have four exponential moving averages, 10 in yellow, 20 in blue, 60 in orange and 250 in green. We have a RSI set to a 10 close with a green 30 level representing oversold and the red 70 level representing overbought. We have a MACD with a 10 for the short term moving average and 20 for the long term moving average and a 9 to smooth. We have a volume profile on the right hand side with a built in point of control which is a yellow dash line. This works on a visible range so whatever we can see on the chart is what it is accounting for in volume. There you go, it adjusts as we, as we adjust. Right then, let's start here on the weekly time frame and see what we can see. Currently trading an inside candle for the week. We just zoom in, we can see that slight wick, well significant wick to the upside but still inside the body of the previous week's candle, so no lower low as of yet. Previous week's low was 42982.29, so haven't broken down any further yet. Right, still above the 10, 20, 60 and 250 exponential moving averages, so the upward trend still essentially for the moment intact. RSI is just cooling off from oversold conditions, back below 70 but not quite in the neutral zone between 40 and 60. We can see here that we have a high and a higher high in price from the high of the week of the 4th of January to the high of the week of the 15th of February and we can see that on the RSI we have a high and a lower high. This is the bearish divergence which has now presented itself into as this correction which is currently occurring. So we often see and you will see when I do my Elliott Wave count later that I have this labelled as a 3-4 we have a 3-4 here in the RSI and then we have another peak into a 5 which is lower but higher in price. This is quite common, 3, 4, 5. No. So we go 3, 4, 5, 3, 4, 5. Higher high, lower high, bearish divergence. Right then, let's come down to the MACD and see what we can see here. A couple of darker green bars in the histogram showing a loss of bullish momentum but by no means bearish as of yet not on the weekly time frame at least. No sign of crossing over yet. So let's go over and have a look at the day time frame. Right. On the day time frame we are currently trading, let's zoom in a little bit, currently trading at 47791 spot 16 as I speak to you now below the 10 exponential moving average, below the 20 exponential moving average, above the 60, above the 250. Essentially, we appear to either be in a uh, counter trend move from a new trend to the upside, or we are in the continuation of a downtrend. We will talk about that more with our Elliott Wave count. Uh, no bullish crossover here on the MACD, a loss of bearish momentum, but we seem to be flattening out rather than bouncing at the moment. RSI is called off into neutral territory between the 40 and 60. No immediate breakdown or bounce, you know, apparent looking at the chart. Right, so let's bring up our Elliott Wave count and we're going to take a little time here just to remind ourselves of where we are in time and space before we talk about our two options which are nice and simple. The first thing I want to point out is where we've come to so far. So if I, you just bear with me for a moment, I need to find my trend extension and my pitchforks as well for that matter. So let's try this one. Is this the one? Yeah, so this shows us the primary wave one, two, 
swing high, swing low, pivot. And we can see how the three has run an awful long way, but has stayed fully inside of this pitchfork, coming almost to the top of it. Now, I suspect that we are in the peak of a primary wave three going into a primary wave four now, with the five yet to come, which could well be the top of the pitchfork, signalling a cycle wave one completion. That could be a few months away yet. It could be closer, it could be longer. It depends on how long it takes for us to run through this correction. Right then, so the next thing I want to look at is, uh, if you bear with me, let me find it. It's here somewhere, that's our Fib retracement. Yeah, we'll look at that in a moment. I'm just trying to find, here's the trend extension, okay? So if we just switch this pitchfork off, double click should take us to where it, no, it doesn't. Unfortunately, TradingView have recently upgraded their software. And they've gotten rid of the hide and see feature by clicking on individual tools. You used to click on something and it would be here for you to hide. Unfortunately, now you have to go through your object tree, find it to hide it. And that's an absolute pain in the backside, to be honest, slowing me down. Right then, so our trend extension, taking the wave 1 and projecting it from the 2 to find a 3, we find that we come roughly up to the 1618 where we'd expect to find a 3. And then we start topping out. For a while I've been toying with the idea of this being the primary free. I finally decided to just call it such and relabel. And now if we go to logs uh, off of log scale and we go into arithmetic scale, we can see that this extension in the free is not a simple 1618, but a gigantic 4236 and still going. So there comes a point, I think, even though we prefer to look at the chart in log, there comes a point where you've got to call it for a way free and uh I think that's roughly where we are. <coughs> I could be wrong, but I've, it looks like we've done enough for a wave three. So that's why I'm banking on at the moment. So now we have a wave four potentially to unfold, which could be quite time consuming. Doesn't have to be, could be significantly shorter than this gigantic wave two, which is basically 10 months. It could be much shorter than that significantly. So, and uh, we've got all that to look forward to. So that's the first thing I wanted to point out but we are still ge uh, geometry, from point of view of market geometry, still well within that initial 1-2 pivot of that pitchfork and we have come a long long way so before everybody starts panicking about how much the price is falling, the price has barely even moved to be absolutely honest you might say, oh it was almost 60,000 and now it's 47, yeah it might feel like a lot but it's not because we've come up from three grand guys in just under two years so you know <laughs> Just trying to get some perspective is what I'm saying here. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to come and we're going to zoom in to shorter term time frame. Come down to the one hour, auto the chart and see what we can see. We're going to go back into arithmetic scale here. So we can get a better look at this correction. Now the first thing I want to do is come back to this intermediate wave 3, 4. Count through to our intermediate wave 5, which I'm calling primary wave 3. So... I've relabeled this a W, X, Y, X, Z, which is a triple zigzag. It looks a bit like a descending wedge here into a 3 4 on the intermediate time frame. I then got five waves up complete into our fifth, into a fifth intermediate wave into our primary 3, and now we're correcting on a primary time frame into a 4. That's what I suspect is happening. So now we've got to make sense of that. Now, how can we confirm that this upward trend is over on the minor time frame? Well, I've got a pitchfork for that as well. And we can see here how using the swing high, swing low pivot of the 1 2, we've contained all of this pitchfork again and uh, all of the price within this pitchfork. And we've overthrown in the wave 3 of the 3, which we like to see. And uh, we've just gone over the outer bound of the pitchfork here at the 5, and then we've broken through to the bottom. And you can see how this was very technical breakdown to confirm the end of this trend because as we fell from the top we found support right at the outer bound here and bounced hit the outer bound this is the extreme outer bound hit the inner outer bound bounced along it and then we've started to sell off tested it again you can see here and here we've tested the outer bound we've fallen out of it we've come back up in three ways tested the outer bound again and fallen out so we keep trying to work our way back into the trend but it's just not having it that's basically how you've got to look at it you've got to look as this trend has failed and it doesn't matter how much we try to push ourselves back up into it we just it's it's a it's a no-go so we can assume this is a wave three complete and we are now working sideways into a wave four so let's just take that off the chart now so now let's talk about the actual correction well uh correction sorry let's talk about the actual correction 
and the two options we've got. So we're just going to full screen the chart for a minute. Right, so option number one is the correction's over. This is the bullish idea in the short term. And we've gone bum, 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 W, X, Y, A, B, C into the W, W, X, Y, X, Z into the X, triple combination in here. And then a zigzag A, B, C into the W, triangle in the B wave here to confirm the free wave move. Jobs are good and off we go boss. So that's the bullish idea and we've bottomed here and now we're going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 into a 1, into a 2, 3, 4, 5 and out. Okay, that's option 1. Option 2, and I'll be honest, this is the one I'm leaning into, is that the correction is just getting started and we've only completed one wave down so far. That's how I'm seeing things now. A bit more complicated correction. So the way we see this is we've still got our WXY, but instead of being a WXY 3, 4, it's a WXY W. So that means we've got a WXY on a larger time frame to play out. So one wave down into a W, an X, and a Y to come. So all I've done here is taken W and extended it from our current top here which I'm calling the uh, calling the X it might not be but it could be to find our Y this is one to one parity and this gives us a price of 375 32 spot 76 now this is a 38.2% retracement of the wave 3 I just show you what I mean I've got a recent retracement here all right so this green line right here comes in at 37 five three two spot seven three now what I like about this is what kind of fib retracement do we expect for a wave four we expect either 23 6 or 38 2 38 2 is right here and if we take one to one parity of the W projected from the X like so where do we come to here's a 100 percent a three seven seven eight spot nine three it's basically on top of it it brings us right back in to the previous intermediate wave three four so a primary four extending down into the previous intermediate wave four that's lovely 100 percent uh, extension that's lovely 38.2 percent uh, retracement that's lovely all the things we'd expect to see in a wave four Right, so I'm leaning towards this count, I'm leaning towards us not being done yet, and having a little further to go. Uh, so let's just hide that trend based fib, and let's hide this retracement one again, this is locked, and let's just hide the count. So from here, uh, they're the two options, but it's not quite that simple, because the X might not be done. So I'm just going to touch on this for a couple of minutes, and then we'll wrap things up. You could say A, B, C, X is done some kind of leading diag some kind of diagonal pattern here probably and then a free wave move down like so possible or we're yet to complete the X wave and we've simply done a free wave move into a free wave move into a free wave move which will stop before the high and then we'll come down and of course we'd have to adjust and bring our targets up because the X wave would have come a lot higher and therefore our expected completion point of the Y would be a lot higher as well but for the moment I'm happy to call this the top and while this is intact let's just put a price target there at 52701 spot 88 this is the top of the X until I see otherwise until the price comes above this I'm calling this ABC into an X until the price comes all the way back above the previous high which is our 58334 spot 88 Five eight three three four spot eight eight until we come back above that high. I'm not going to be convinced of the bullish argument that this is a one two and three four until I see that price level broken. So there you go, guys. There's the two options I've got. We've either completed and we have to see the high taken out to confirm, and the five wave structure to support it, or we lead, or we're going for the deeper correction, which is the one I think we are going for, which is we've done one wave down, we've done one wave up, and now we've got another wave of three waves down to find our why could be quick could be slow but that's the option i think we're seeing and that would call for a retracement down to around the 37 532 spot 76 region bringing you into that prior wave four which we like to see on the intermediate time frame giving you one-to-one -one extension of the y of the w projected from the x to find the y and the 38.2 percent retracement of the whole way free up all of those things i like very much so that's what I'm leaning into. So anything below this blue level here, below this line, which is 43045 spot 14, 
anywhere below that down to the Y once we take out this low we could potentially bottom in the Y we don't have to come all the way down to parity but anywhere below this low we could finish the Y so really this whole area depending on your own personnel taste for risk this whole area represents an accumulation zone I'm going to be I've already started accumulating as I thought this was an APC complete originally I'm now not convinced of it but I don't mind I've got my long-term uh, position in Bitcoin which I've been building up for many a year so you know that's that if we come down lower and I see three waves down into a Y anywhere inside this box depending on your own personal uh, you know assessment of risk you can start accumulating Bitcoin in and that's uh, that's not financial trading advice read the disclaimer it's just my opinion right then guys I will leave that there and that's Bitcoin done um, I've got another video I want to do on the stock market hopefully I should have that out either today or tomorrow and uh, yeah that's it if you're new to the channel and you like what you've seen please subscribe smash the like button feel free to let me know what you think in the comment section below try and keep the discussion limited to technical analysis if you can and uh, yeah all the best and I'll be back with you shortly take care